Hey guys, I've gotten this request quite a few times um, about painting Appaloosa spots. Uh, and I know many people ask me how to do it and, um, you know, what are the different ways of doing it and what do I need uh, So, basically, basic Appaloosa spots, you need two primary colors. White and black, of course. Now, if you were to do bay spots, um, that's a little bit more complex than just regular black Appaloosa spots. Um, so we're going to talk about two different Appaloosa spots. There is Leopard Appaloosa, which is a totally white horse with black spots, right? That is probably one of the easiest colors to do. The reason being is, is that when you prime your horse and you put his coat on, you know, his, his face black, you know, and you fill that in and so forth. Um, and if you want his legs black, you do his legs. Uh, but the next step is, is that you take black acrylic paint. And I always recommend using a reference photo and you start putting black Appaloosa spots all over your horse. Then, let it dry. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back outside, get your primer, and you're actually going to spray over the horse. So when you start spraying over the horse, it'll leave a nice light mist of white primer over the black spots which will give you that faded outed look that a lot of the Appaloosa spots have around them which is mapping but when we get to other colors let's say this guy here which is a Pentaloosa um, it's a lot different okay so what you need is still this bad colors white and black and uh, what we're going to do is you are going to mix up a uh, batch of very, very, very light gray, like extremely light, like, uh, like smoky gray or something. Let me see if I can show you. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, it's very, very, very light gray. It's almost white. Um, now, do take into consideration that when you are working with acrylics, acrylics do darken. That's how they work. So, if you make like a light gray, it'll actually be a little bit darker than that, slightly, but it'll still be darker. So, what we're going to do is because we can't do that primer technique with, uh, you know, like a solid color horse such as this uh, chestnut here. We have to do it a little bit differently. You take white, your uh, smoke colored gray paint that you just made, and you're going to put spots on your horse. Like so. Let those dry. Once it's dry, then you're going to use the same brush. This is a, uh, let me see if it's got a number on here. It should. This is a number four brush. It's, uh, I believe it's a uh, long round brush. Uh, I like this brush because it's got a very fine tip to it and it also has a broad spectrum which allows me to get a little bit more paint on the brush without the brush actually drying out. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to dip our brush into our black paint. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm real tired. Okay. Now you don't want to load up your brush too much paint on there. It's not a good idea, so I usually have about this much. Um, just the tip of it, because that's a very good moderate amount. Now what we're going to do next is, is we're going to actually go in. Take him off his stand here. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go in to our spots, like let's say the this spot right here so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go in 
and paint inside that spot. Like so. Now, the nice thing about acrylics is, is that they're very good about erasing. So if you make a mistake, uh, they're really, really, really good about that. Um, now, I forgot to mention one thing. Once you have decided officially where you want your spots, I always recommend uh, spraying your horse with matte finish before continue on. The reason being is, is that if you do make a very large mistake, you can go and put them under some water and get rid of the black spots. And it's the easiest thing to do than having to be all mad at yourself because you made a mistake and then you destroyed your horse. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let me put him back on here now. All right. Okay, so let's turn him around here. Uh, okay, I think I might be able to paint better on this side. Okay, so... We're basically going to do the same thing with these spots over here. You know, you just fill them in. And you have to make sure that you leave enough of the white around the outer edge. That's the mapping that you want. Now, you can have spots that don't have any mapping at all. That is also very common in Appaloosas. Appaloosas have a lot of different um, spots. They have ghost spots which are just gray. There's no uh, black at all in it. Then they have the mapping, which is the spots like this. And then they can also just have regular black spots. So Appaloosa spots can come in many, 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 many shades. Now remember that also that Appaloosa spots are not perfectly round. I see this way too often in beginner artists uh, and sometimes even advanced artists. The thing is is that you need to look at your reference photo. If you look at your reference photo, Appaloosa spots are not perfectly round. They're either slightly oval or they have uh, like little sharp edges to them or something along the lines. They're not perfectly round. And when I have people ask me to critique their model horses and let them know what they need to do or to to uh, improve on their horse and then I tell them that the Appaloosa spots are too round that they should be uh, more oval or jagged shape they get mad so make sure you got lots of reference photos that's the best thing I can tell you to do when looking and trying to do Appaloosa spots. Although this, doing Appaloosa spots is also a, a much more advanced technique uh, because it can get very complex if you start doing ghost spots and uh, just all around different colors. It's not the easiest thing to do and it's very time consuming. Um, Appaloosa spots probably take me depending on how many I have oh gosh probably around three four hours just to fill in half the horse if uh, you know he's got a lot of Appaloosa spots all over him it does take a very long time and it's very time consuming and uh, a lot of people ask me you know why why do you charge so much to do this? You know, it shouldn't be that hard. It's not the hard part that's really the problem. It's the time-consuming part. I mean, if you think about how many hours it takes to actually paint a horse, it gets very time-consuming. <clears throat> that doesn't include the drying time or, you know, doing detailed work. So, you know, and... It's just, it's very time consuming and a lot of people don't realize that uh, 
it does take a lot of work to paint these. Now you can see here, I've been talking for like what, seven minutes or something and I've only gotten this far. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's very time consuming and it's not easy to do a good little spot right here. Okay, there we go, got him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's very time consuming, it's not easy to do, uh, and if you, I, what I recommend for a lot of beginners is that you do this on paper first, um, or a piece of cardboard, cardboard's even better, or wood, doesn't matter, something that you can practice on to get the t technique down before you actually go to a very expensive horse. I also recommend just using stable mates, they're the cheapest and they're very easily replaced compared to a resin which is this guy here uh... this resin is about two hundred fifty dollars so if you make a mistake on this guy it's going to be a lot harder to deal with later on down the road so yeah but uh... you know it's just experience and getting a lot of colors under your book i have done almost every single color there is for horses including brindle which a lot of people don't see too much of that because it's not a trait that is genetically passed down it's a very hard color to get to be passed down from parents to full extremely hard so it's not a very common color at all it's extremely rare color, but I did actually get to see a horse that had uh, semi-brindling in his coat, and it was absolutely stunning. There, but you can see there how I'm doing it, and uh, get a close-up view right there. But you can see all you do is you just fill in your little white spots, you leave enough on the outside to leave the mapping around them and you're done and you could do uh, double spots which are two spots beside them you could just do regular little black spots that are uh, you know hanging around just having a good old time um, you know you can do all of sorts of things there's no limitations on Appaloosa spots for real I'll tell you that right now <laughs> there just isn't um, so yeah, but uh, thanks for viewing.